jury show. My name is Ellen Gordon. This is Karen Neems. We are your show chair people. This is Katerina Lanfranco. She is the curator of this exhibition and she is going to speak shortly and we are going to give the awards shortly. This was a really fantastic experience. I was invited um, through connections with my former colleague, colleague at the MoMA, who was the uh, guest curator last year. And in the invitation, I was given free reign to come up with a concept or a theme, and I thought that um, visual narratives would be a really great kind of an umbrella term. It was a way for me to expand my own notions of visual narrative, and also to, um, I think, whenever there's an open call, kind of encourage people who who may not think of their own work that way to kind of expand their own self-definition in terms of image makers or artists. Um, so the process for me, people have been asking this. I got the images, um, went through them several times. It was really hard to kind of cut out pieces and um, I, I would read the blurbs and the titles for more information if there was a sense of not being sure what the work was about or if I needed to know more about the work. And then um, I printed out all the images of like the second round cutting and um, moved them around so that I didn't wasn't only kind of facing a screen and, and going in sequence of what was coming up on the screen. And it was just, it was so wonderful to come here once the final selection was made, to come here and have everything unpacked and ready to hang. And I, I had planned to come here for just a few hours to set things but I decided I need to stay until like every little piece was set and like the location and the spacing. And um, even at the very end, we switched two pieces because of how it felt. And I'm an artist as well. And I feel that good curating and good installation of a, a big show like this has a similar kind of reward because it's this total aesthetic experience where the pieces, um, they, have a dialogue with each other. Um, they sort of correspond in terms of form, color, size, uh, narrative components, technique, materials. You've really gone above and beyond, and we, you've just been wonderful. Thank so, you. Um, I would like to present the awards. The, uh, this is the Bob and Pat Phillips Award with the bird cage in the hand. Everyone's nodding, yes. Um, so that piece was really captivating in that there was a really clear um, limited palette color um, approach with these elements like the bird cage and the doily and the shark teeth and a little um, scooper were married through composition, color, and placement to have this a transformation happen where you see a bird and a hand and a symbolic gesture and this sort of um, passage of time and life all in one piece. So, very nice. The Carancy Award goes to Richard Ventry. So Richard's piece there's a nude woman who is coming out of some clouds with a, a, um, a coffee be beverage spilling out. And so what struck me about this piece is that, you know, through the history of Western art, there have been nude women in paintings and in drawings. But this piece, there's this beautiful nude woman, but she is supporting the drama that is happening right at the tips of her finger. Um, and I just thought that that was such a wonderful way to uh, kind of change the way we see female nudes and uh, kind of think about a, a really contemporary approach. Um, and it was really interesting to hear Richard talk about his love for Bach. That happened to be a part of the series about Johann Sebastian Bach in the style of Tiepolo. Who I also really in like. celebrating what will be his 333rd anniversary of his birth next year. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that is the coffee cantata. There so. you go, yes. Wow. So the song of coffee and the, um, the high drama, both of Bach and of Tiepolo. Um, and Tiepolo is known for his over-the-top theatrical um, site-specific fresco paintings where you have legs and arms that are coming out of the frescoes in 3D. You can see the drama captured in this uh, compressed moment. 
Thank you very much. Thank you. Just to win Zibian. This is win <laughs> the climate change. This, it captures, I guess, dystopia. <laughs> dystopia of this crumbling city and trying to figure out what to do. You know, the, the dinosaurs are kind of like um, chess pieces or something, it feels like, on that table. And what I really loved about this piece is that Wynne clearly has a mastery over, you know, realistic painting technique. But he's not relying on that as the sort of guiding engine of the work. He's combined it with this really strong conceptual um, content. And often, you know, climate change is a really heavy topic, right? And so for him to be able to convey it in this very accessible way using a figure that's turning away that allows you into the space with these toys is I, I found really profound visual narrative to deal with something that is um, poignant, impactful, and you know can be really distressing too. So congratulations. Zep there. Zep's piece is right behind some of you over here. And this was the piece that we hung first. Sometimes you need kind of keystone pieces. Um, and this piece, it has a lot of presence. You know, the size of it definitely is part of that presence. But it's also the kind of various access points in this um, mixed media, collage, painting, drawing. And the first thing that I asked him when, when I saw him this evening is, have you seen the Robert Rauschenberg? Show. Actually, that's yeah, 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 yeah. But I said, you know, if David Hockney and Robert Rauschenberg were to have an artistic child, that artistic <laughs> child would make something like this, right? Like the best I've yeah. Ever heard I mean, you have this sort of California cool, like flat illustrational pictorial elements, and then you have the pop culture mashup a la Rausch Rauschenberg. But then you have something really contemporary and fresh about it, too. You know, the material. Um, you know, it's not dealing with sort of the, the um, cool distance self-screening processes that Rauschenberg explored. It's very, it's kind of very accessible. There's like crayon and paint and like this sort of very physical, visceral materials. And I asked that, I'm like, where'd you go to art school? He said, I didn't go to art school. And I think it's really fantastic that this community here at the Locked Artists Association can um, foster artistic um, development and exploration by people who have gone to grad school, undergrad or not, and it doesn't matter, you know? There's this kind of um, openness to participation and inclusion and um, engagement that, I mean, this piece is a really beautiful, um, successful artwork, and it's really ambitious too. Mm -hmm. And it's um, by someone who had to carve their way into it, you know, totally self-directed. And I think it's a real testament both to you as an artist and to the institution. So, great. Thank you. Thank you, Luca, for being there. And this is my daughter, Amelia, who's here um, doing a bit of video, <laughs> video capturing. But it was so great to work um, with Karen and Ellen and Donna everyone else who was kind of coming in and helping and it was just such a wonderful experience to see this work together um, hung and have kind of a sort of glowing dialogue.